Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Wanted to talk a bit today about the consumerism and prepping. Now this is not a topic that is new. It's been talked about by many before. It's been thought about by many amongst us before. More and more every day, I'm sure. I'm going to use as an example for this uh, idea I have with regards to consumerism, the movie Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead, which was aired in 1978 or something like that, I think, possibly 79. And basically the plot is uh, a few people get trapped in a shopping mall and it's full of zombies, mindless zombies, and George Romero for this movie did a bit of a social critique as he usually does uh, through the medium of zombies and humans trying to survive and so there's a lot of cinematography that depicts the zombies sort of trudging through these malls uh, aimlessly and I guess it's sort of poking fun at the modern day consumer and you know, you have these, I guess the idea is that uh, there is even a quote in the movie where the guy is asking one of the other survivors there, he's like, why are all these zombies coming back to the mall? I mean, there's no, you know, there was no reason for them to go there. And the other guy said, well, instinct, you know, it could be instinct. Uh, I think they were trying to drive the point home that, you know, they didn't know why they were going there. They were just going there. And that's sort of the same situation as we have now. They don't know why they're there. They're just going there because perhaps for lack of better option, you know. And I think in a lot of ways that the consumerism of prepping, I mean, lots of people will try to justify it and consider themselves to be standing outside of the common consumerism, which is, you know, buying new TVs and buying fancy clothes and shit like that. And lots of people try to put themselves inside of it and say, well, no, you know, I'm prepping, so I can buy whatever I want so long as it's, you know, in the way of prepping, and then it's not consumerism, it's not materialism. And I find it kind of ironic that this sort of prepping consumerism well, it prepares you for potential calamity. It also expedites that process. It also encourages it by encouraging this monetary system. It, uh, it encourages, you know, global trade because most of this stuff is coming from, from China. There really is no way around that. And a lot of this stuff is uh, taking its toll on the environment, you know. A lot of uh, the environment is becoming more and more toxic, the chemicals and stuff we're putting into it. I'm not going to really get into that. But all that stuff we buy actually is uh, bringing Doomsday closer to us. And it's kind of, it's just kind of ironic, I think, that that's the case. Now, perhaps our lives have become so empty that we feel the need to justify our existence by buying more stuff. And this isn't a critique to the preppers per se. I mean, it's it's far better to waste your money on preparedness items than it is on sports and shit like that. You know, I mean, it's far, far more of a rational investment to invest in something you might need than something that you know you will never ever need. So this is not a critique against preppers per se, it's, a, it's an examination. So don't just be so quick to get on the dislike bar and, you know, just because I'm speaking to you and I guess if that's the case then I guess you gotta look at yourself at the end of the day, so whatever. But I'm, I'm okay with examining my behavior and 
critically applying the lens to myself. I don't mind doing that. That's how you grow as a person. And I can say that there's been times when my prepping has become very gluttonous. And it's become very far removed from what life's about. You know, there's this notion in Hollywood that depicts the survivors in these movies as constantly looking to resupply, you know. Oh, it's all about the food, the guns, the ammo, you know, the gear, the toys. Just like in Dawn of the Dead, you have these people who are trapped in a mall, and so they engage in full-on indulgence of their of their senses, you know, they, they have everything in this mall. They have a gun store, they have a skating rink, they got everything you need, and in both versions, actually, the 2004 and 1978 version, there is a, I think it's like a five minute sort of reel about, you know, and showing them enjoying all the stuff and indulging in all the materialism, consumerism, and for a while they, they really are having a good time. And, you know, the novelty of having all these things uh, hasn't worn off yet. But at some point, and in both movies, at some point, they realize that life is, life is shitty. Like, you know, that, that stuff is not the reason why we live. In the first movie, one of the women who was pregnant at the time freaked out. And she said, like, I can't take this anymore, you know, like, we have all this stuff, but we have no people, we have no, you know, we, uh, our lives are just meaningless, consuming all this shit. And then the second one, uh, Ving Rhames was like, you know, I would rather take my chances on the road than wait in here to die. Part of that was motivated by the security threat to the building, but the other part was motivated by the fact that they were starting to realize that, you know, that this isn't what life's about. Life isn't about stuff. Life isn't about resupplying. It's like they do in The Walking Dead or, you know, uh, that's what I liked about the movie The Road is because they, they found all that stuff and dad was wise enough to move on or depicted the character uh, who played the dad was uh, wise enough to to move on and he realized that you know it wasn't it wasn't going to keep them safe so you know this idea that you know you're going and I think that's why a lot of people entertain this fantasy about the end of the world because of the last man on earth thing where they're just going to go shopping you know where it's just going to be like a shopping spree unlimited shopping spree where you can just have whatever you want all the things you can't have now you can just go and loot and steal and it's kind of sad in a way that that's what's on people's minds I think it's kind of sad anyways. So I don't know, what do you think about all this? This crazy consumerism and prepping. I mean, clearly people are making some big bucks off of it. There's absolutely no doubt about that. That is obvious. And, you know, to some of them, you know, great. <coughs> um, to the people who are shamelessly marketing it as something people need. I don't know how people can live with themselves to do that. I guess some people can. I personally never could. The only reason why I put ads in my YouTube videos is so that YouTube will potentially give me more airplay. I don't even have a Google AdSense account linked to it, and even if I did, it would only be mere pennies that I'd be earning on every video. Um... So I don't do this for money. 
it seems uh, in a failing economy, if you're making money off of, you know, videos that talk about that failing economy, to me, that just seems kind of dumb. But, you know, I mean, to each their own, If I'm not going to go and attack somebody for doing that either, like, directly. I'll critique it generally, but I'll never attack somebody directly. I've been there, done that. Doesn't really accomplish that much. So, I'm sure preppers are a lot. There's a lot of lonely preppers out there, and you know, uh, like the Ving Rames was, like he said there. You know, uh, don't want to die here, and that really is akin to the World War Z thing with Brad Pitt. You know. Uh, where he's like, uh, you know, movement is life. And it is, you know, life isn't about just sitting somewhere, eating and shitting. You know, life is about going and doing, taking risks, you know. And I look at my friend, uh, some of my friends, I should say, uh, one in particular, the one I went to the West Coast Trail with, and uh, he's a very simple person. He uh, in, in terms, in a minimalist, materialist sense, obviously, it's very not simple mentally, but uh, or spiritually. But he, he's one of these kind of guys who will collect, like you know, uh, pitch from the spruce trees, and you know he'll make his own bags out of canvas, and he'll uh, he'll do a lot of stuff by hand. And I'm very jealous sometimes. at the intimate sort of the level of sentiment he has with his stuff that I that you'll never achieve from buying from a store. You know, I think right now he's trying to build himself a bow and he's going to flint nap some arrowheads and he's going to use the pitch he made and I don't know if he's going to go as far as to make a sinew bowstring or who knows. But uh, I can tell that the satisfaction he gets from using his the creations that he's made far exceeds mine that, you know, I get from buying from a store. And I am jealous of that. Lots of people say, oh, well, you can just go and do that too. Well, yeah, I know I can go and do that, okay? Uh, just because I don't say everything in a video doesn't mean I'm not aware of certain possibilities, obvious things like that. You know, there's no sense in stating the obvious. And not to quote Brad Pitt again, but I guess I'll have to, uh, in the movie Fight Club, he talks about uh, how it's only when you've lost everything that you're free to do anything. You know, it's only when you've freed yourself of the burden of all this shit that you're really free to, to take on life as it happens. And... And he talks about how sometimes the stuff you own can start owning you. And you know, how much of your stuff are you going to be able to? I just wonder how many people are going to get killed trying to bring all their gear with them when the crap hits the roof, as Jimmy Rance would say. I don't know, man, but it's, uh, it's pretty sad, you know, and the I know as an addictions counselor, the dopamine response that you get from buying a new thing and shopping, it's very short-lived. Uh, it's just like an addiction. It's definitely an addiction. And in a lot of ways, a lot of people are addicted to prepping. You know, it's like a, it's like a collecting, like a hobby, like a stamp collection or, or something, something really perverted like that. You know, I call it perverted because for me, collecting things is the, I don't know, it's uh, a gross display of consumerism and possessiveness and attachment to the material world, but uh, I think the ones who are going to survive are the ones who can be unattached, the ones who can realize what's important and remember that life isn't about stuff, it's about this organic mass we inhabit that is fleeting. 
So let me know what you think about uh, consumerism and prepping, and by all means, like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out.